Hey, happy Friday morning. Good to see you. Good morning, Tom. How are you? I'm fantastic. My latest thing I've been saying uh, with clients is tell me everything when I get in, you know, because it used to be like, hey, what's up? How's your week? You know, tell me about your week or tell me since the last time I saw you. And lately it's been more tell me everything. And uh, I don't know whether I haven't gotten any feedback, whether they like that or not, but uh, that's what I'm using for now. Tell me everything. <laughs> it's like the EMDR response. You get tired of saying, let's go with that. <laughs> We'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> but it's good. Uh, it it works because it's always that awkward moment, you know, when somebody's coming in the room and you know, I I break the ice with, uh, hey, would you like some water? And I have a little mini fridge with stock of water, you know. Would you like some water? You know, it's really important to hydrate, and that's sort of like a a, a suggestion, you know, like um, yeah. we need to drink water, we need to stay hydrated, and so if I can at least, if nothing else. <laughs> I at least um, impart that, you know, wisdom or knowledge or suggestion, you know, hey, it's important to drink water. In fact, like my therapist is offering me water because that's a healthy thing. This is a healthy environment, you know, drink some water. So. One you of the know, top few five bottles of water summer. that uh, I had to throw away because they're like two sips were taken out of right. That's what you water the plants with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So anyway, you know, that's, uh, that's a way, way to check in on one of your top five and a subtle way of, you know, breaking the ice and how are you caring for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. And I like that a little bit better than, you know, boy, this weather we're having, it's really hot out there. <laughs> no, no crap. We live in central South Florida. It's hot. It's hot in October. So, yeah. Yeah. Is that rain? Must be raining out there. <laughs> Yes, Isn't that funny? We engage in all of those things, things that your father said, like all the yeah. dad jokes and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You come <laughs> back in because you forgot your keys. You're not going to get too far without those. Yucka, yucka. Yucka, yucka. So how's your week been? It's been really good. We're planning on going on vacation uh, next week, so we're excited about that. And uh, it's good to turn mm -hmm. your brain off a little bit and just kind of, uh, you know, veg out for, uh, for a little bit, not something that I readily do. I'm usually go, go, go. Uh, I try to be as productive as I can and that can not, that can be, um, bad or harmful if you're going, going, burning the candle at both ends, even if you, uh, tackle all these different tasks and, uh, you feel good about that. I mean, the, the pride in doing all these things, is great, but the downside is um, fatigue. And so uh, I, I've gotten better at that over the years, but it's still a work in progress. Well, you know, some people that go, go, go and, and schedule out their entire lives use that as a distraction. You know, I'm distracted from actually thinking about and working through issues <laughs> that I know I need to work through in my life. And I'm just going to keep it very, I'm not saying this about you, Tom, of course. Yeah. You know, some people use that as a, as a very big distraction. You know, there are Guilty. people that. Guilty. <laughs> you know, we work with, with folks. I've seen plenty of people over the years that um, real type A, real work dedicated, you know, go, 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 writing emails at midnight kind of stuff. And um, once they finally let it go, they have a really, really hard time yeah. because, their definite, you know, their schedule and their busyness has distracted them from really addressing things that they need to address in their life, relationships, you know, mood, whatever. So, well, I see that, that with sure. <clears throat> older people that I have that are clients um, who are retired, who don't have anything, you know, to really distract themselves with like work or a sense of purpose or, you know, and they uh, potentially uh, sometimes start floundering because they don't know what to yeah. do with themselves. And so they're just sitting around watching the news, which can be uh, harmful. Um, younger people, of course, are watching social media. So, but, you know, older people watching the news and they're on Facebook and they're getting bombarded with all these things, you know, especially politics and, uh, they uh, mm. they start to have these emotional responses, and there is uh, there isn't any distraction uh, for them or anything for them to engage in. Uh, so they right. they start to 
have tremendous anxiety and maybe even some sadness and depression because there's a, there's not a whole lot of meaning or purpose uh, in their lives. And so that's one of the ways I try to intervene is to try to help them develop a sense of purpose, something to uh, to engage in that they can feel good about. Right. You know, we talk about uh, internal and external 30 second elevator speech, you know, and I think this is where it comes into play is, you know, we talk so much about the internal, the thing that we say to ourselves about ourselves all the time. We've talked about that many times. But even the external is very interesting. Like you think you meet somebody for the first time at you know, a barbecue or whatever. And you're like, you know, hey, my, you know, I'm Brett. Nice to meet you. Who, who are you? Tell me about yourself. And it's very telling on how they introduce themselves. Yeah. You know, hey, I'm Brett. I'm a executive. I, you know, I work here or, I, you know, when they put out that their work is their first thing. I mean, that's usually what people identify as their significant personality trait or kind of that the the fact that defines <laughs> them. So I always find that very interesting of what how people lead in on an introduction. And it's interesting talking about um, some uh, people who are retired. Uh, they may not have done that job, you know, in 20 years, but they still come out with that, you know, oh yeah, I used to work yeah. on Wall Street. You know, like, well, how long ago was that? Well, that, you know, that was in the 80s. <laughs> right. So you can tell exactly, you know, <laughs> yeah. where they're gathering their, their self-concept and their yeah. definition of who they are. But they still they still hold on to that because they need that uh, um, for, uh, for for a sense of, um, you know, accomplishment, a sense of pride or that's what that's how they identify themselves. But there's much more to being a human than just the labels that you slap on yourself. Right. And, you know, if your your first definition of yourself is your job, you know, what are the other things going on in your life? How do you how are you going to? Your job is not going to be there for you forever. You know, you have that whole concept of uh, work to live, not live to work, you know, yeah. and what else do you want to do with your life? Who else are you besides what you do? Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I just work a lot. I work. I have a family. I pay the bills. I mow the grass and then I go to work. Oh, okay. And, and I think a big part of that is uh, this need or this, this desire uh unconscious drive uh to 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 have a, a a purpose or to be purposeful to have find meaning in in life or in our existence uh in our worlds uh, with the people around us um and and everybody has that to some uh degree even if they're not necessarily focused on, on that and career uh job ends up being that thing that we can cling to that this gives me a uh, sense of purpose. And I think it's important for us to find um, other things that give us maybe an arc or a theme to our lives that give us a sense of purpose. And if not that, then, or in addition to that, finding things each day that can give us a sense of purpose and meaning that don't necessarily have anything to do with what we call our career. Yeah. There's a a, a many great books. The one that pops into my mind, I love Servant Leadership. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Um, but another one is A Purpose Driven Life. And, you know, what some of the concepts that come out of A Purpose Driven Life are not, I don't define myself by what I do. I define myself by how I do them. Mm -hmm. And A Purpose Driven Life can be, you know, I do it with compassion and kindness. I do it with acceptance. I do it with, you know, um, <laughs> trying to be the best person and be the best human being that I can. And you can do that at work. You can do that in your hobbies. You can do that in your neighborhood. You can do that as a volunteer. You can do that, you know, all kinds of ways. Yeah. And it's more working on yourself in your environments as opposed to what your environments are. Yeah. Yeah. What's my purpose or how am I going to be purposeful today? I think could be a nice yeah. question along with some gratefulness for the things that you are and the things that you do have right now, right in the right. morning, right as you start your day, you know, how am I going to be purposeful? How am I going to be useful to myself, to my family, to my friends, to the people around me, whether I'm right. working or not, doesn't make any difference, but how am I going to be purposeful? I think that could be a really good thing 
uh, for people to do uh, first thing in the morning. Just start with that. I know it's going to feel uncomfortable at first, but eventually, like you'll you'll start to direct your day and your activities, even your reactions to things, in a more purposeful way. Yeah, you know, when working with retirees, <clears throat> particularly, because um, um, I, I have done a lot of work with first responders, and. And, um, you know, when they end those careers, they derive much meaning in their life from being a first responder. Yeah. Um, it's kind of their identity. And so we work on reverse engineering that whole uh, in external, you know, um, elevator speech. So, okay, today is, you know, my name is Brad. I'm a, I've been a first responder for 20 years. I retired five years ago. Um, you know, blah, 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 you know, that story into... What is it that I want it to be? You know, my name's Brett. I'm, you know, I retired as a first responder, but today I love riding motorcycles, reading books, and I volunteer, you know, with kids tutoring two days a week during the school year, you know? So even if it's not who you are right now, putting it out in the universe and reverse engineering, what is it that you want to do? What, how, yeah. how is it you would love to define yourself in, in the future tense? I love that. Uh, if you wanted to write the story, what does the story look like? How is it going to unfold? You are the author of your story. You know, I love, so I, I talk in uh, analogies all the time because they, it's how I organize my life. It's how I think. It's how I learn is through analogies. And, you know, my life is like a library, right? I, it's, a, it's a thin library. It's a long hall-ish type library. And there's a real comfy chair at the one end. Would it be and Hall's Hall? Is it Hall's Hall? <laughs> it's, it's Hall Hall. Yeah. I always thought, you know, it's funny. I always thought I would have made it in the world if I had enough money to donate to a university. And if I did that, I would require them to put the building to call it Hall Hall. So, yeah. yeah. So my life is like this library and I, everything on the left is my history. Everything that's always that's happened in my life. And I refer to it, right? And I even use this visual in my brain. It's like, man, I am struggling with this thing going on. What book in my library do I need to open and rethink <laughs> about? What memories do I need to pull? What experiences do I need to pull from yeah. to work on what I have going on now move forward? So that's the left side of my library. The right side of my library is all blank books, right? It's my life to come. And I have used that analogy why I pull a blank thing down and I'm like, this is what I want to happen. This is... You know, I do a lot of goal setting and I, I can't stress enough how important goal setting is. Yeah. Uh, and I'll do it once a year usually. Um, what do I want to accomplish in the next 12 months? And I don't always do it in January because it's kind of hokey around the new year, but it's that's what works for you. That's what works for you. Um, but I write down, what is it that I want to do and accomplish in the next 12 months? What am I going to focus on? You know, there's 50 things I want to do in my the rest of my life. But what if I'm going to give, put time and attention on one or two of them this year? What are those two? Mm -hmm. So as we're redefining ourselves or going through transitions in our life, I'll pull that imaginary journal blank book out of the right side of the library and I'll write down, you know, I'm going to volunteer this year. I'm going to, you know. I'm going to ride my motorcycle here this year. I'm going to ride it back to Key West. I'm going to do whatever it is I want to do. And I, Tom, you'll be very impressed. I have been working. I've been wanting to get back to being more bilingual in some languages um, that I let go for many, many years. And I'm on like a 70 day streak with Duolingo, both Spanish and Italian. Muy Va bene. bueno. Va bene. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's so, awesome. I, mean, that's, I am impressed. You know, I am impressed. That's, that's you are the author of your future. So write it. Nobody yeah. can write it but you. Yeah. So don't let life define you. You define life. You define life. That's a that's a hashtag Brad Hall right there. <laughs> that's a Brad that. Hall classic. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I was thinking. Um, I don't know why this popped in my mind, but uh, there's a there's a method to uh, my silliness. <laughs> I the the most fun I had in grad school, not that it was fun. I mean, I love learning and and writing and researching, but uh, the most fun was uh, when you'd get the uh, vignette of symptoms for a person, and you had to work through and come up with a diagnosis and then a potential you know treatment plan. 
And uh, it's something that we do every day. And, and when we get in the field of mental health and, you know, we're working on identifying, you know, problems or concerns or, or symptoms and matching with diagnosis, we get so used to doing it. But I remember, you know, learning how to do that. And that was really fun because you'd get all these different symptoms and you try to work through and, and discover um, what, what would be most helpful for this person based on that, that diagnosis. And I was thinking that um, if, if you're not the type of person who gets up and decides this is how I'm going to be purposeful or useful, or this is how I'm going to find meaning in my day, if you were to like have a vignette of your behaviors, your actions, your you know thoughts and feelings and how you're conducting your day, and uh, if it, almost as if you're a third party or if somebody else were looking at that, how would they or how would you define the purpose of this person based on their actions? So um, you might find it interesting if you're spending, you know, hours and hours on social media, like that has become your purpose to engage in social media. If you look at your life and, or your day and you're like, I've spent five hours on social media, well, that was your purpose, whether you design that or not, that you have, you're serving a purpose each and every day. I think it's discovering what that is. And then you can work to change that. What would you rather it be? My purpose, I do not want to be watching or looking, consuming social media. I want to be helping people. Right. You're, yeah, social media life, in that case, the life defined you instead of you defined your life. So, yeah, sure. And, oh my gosh, Tom, particularly this week and even some last week. Um, how many people have come to you? Oh my gosh, I can't believe what's happening in the world and this political stuff's a mess. And whether they believe left or they believe right or whatever they believe, everyone, really everyone. <clears throat> and, and it's, you know, it's really, I, and, and people just hate it. But you throw up, all right, so that's been really bugging you. So what did you do to let it not bug you anymore? Did you stop consuming social media? Did you turn the TV off? No. Oh, I watched more. okay. So, so this has been bothering you and this is making, you know, eliciting all these emotions in you and you're spending lots of energy and time consuming these things that don't make you feel good. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell me more about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Well, I got that reaction from a gentleman yesterday who is, has been following <clears throat> social media um, about politics and uh, and he's definitely on one side. I mean, a lot of people are on, you know, a side and I, I'm not on a side, you know, so but and I hate that it's become so polarized. But um, and not to talk about politics, but this is just the one example. And he he was engaging in all these um, conspiracy theories and all these, you know, people talking about, you know, uh, a certain candidate <laughs> and uh, he just thought it was so absurd, but he kept consuming it. And he's like, I can't stop. And I was like, you can stop. You can yeah. most definitely stop. And if you need a distraction, I mean, we have such a negative connotation with that word or that idea. Well, it's just a distraction. Well, you know, if that enables you to redirect your mind, then distract yourself with something else, engage in something that's more productive, something that makes you feel better. If you're consuming YouTube or social media about things that are causing you distress and you you feel like the uh, the answer or solution to that is to watch more social media it, and you're surprised that you feel like crap, like, then we need to stop doing that. Right. Distract yourself <laughs> with something else. Isn't it funny? Yeah. Uh people Tom, time Tom, if a word for people you and i'd be broke <laughs> I, I know like i can't i can't stop i can't stop doing it no you you, you can you can stop you have that ability right and it's you know we, it's funny when people use all these distractions and they can't stop and it's like okay so i, I understand that you need to distract yourself from something right but at some point you need to address the things of that something. So this is, we're actually in therapy. Why don't you tell me about that something? This is a safe place to talk about that something. Exactly. What, what are you distracting from? Yeah. 
well, yeah, what is it that you're not dealing with? You know, are you not ready to deal with that? Or have you been avoiding that and putting it off for so long that you don't know how to tackle it? Well, that's what we're going to do together. We're going to tackle those things, those uncomfortable right. things. And right. you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to sit in the mud puddle, as you say, um, yeah. and be okay with being in distress. And then the more that you uh, endure that, the less you have to suffer from it the less taxing it becomes on your life. Yeah. You ever get so consumed or so stressed or so worried or have some anxiety over doing something like speeches, you know, people oftentimes get so stressed and anxious about giving a speech and then you do the thing and then you're like, oh, that actually wasn't so bad. I actually really enjoyed that. Like there was elements of it that I really liked. I'm proud of myself for doing that, even though I was nervous and worried about it. Why was I so worried about it? Why was I so anxious about it? It's fine. We make it up to be more than it really is in our minds. And we suffer from the perceived potential suffering. And, and back to what you say, you know, why suffer longer? You know, why suffer twice over yeah. that thing or four times over that thing? It's right. probably not going to be as bad as you think it is. We are, it's, all, it's human nature to think worst case scenario. You know, you have a bad day at work or you have a bad presentation or you're late or something. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to get fired. I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to be homeless. I'm gonna, they're going to repossess my car. I'm going to get evicted from my house or my apartment. You know, you did. OK, you were late. <laughs> Let's just address <laughs> being late. I apologize. I'm sorry I'm late. I won't do it again. And then what are you going to do to make sure you're not late again? Right. You got to be. So what? Yeah. Oh. Not the end of the world. And I have people that say, well, if I plan for the worst case scenario and when it's not so bad, then I feel better about it. I feel like by thinking about it and, and going over it in my mind, imagining the worst thing, then uh, when it's not so bad, then um, it's OK. No, that's not good because you suffered during that when you were thinking about the worst case scenario. You were overcome with uh, emotions. You were anxious. You were nervous. You were freaked out about it. You didn't sleep that well. You didn't take care of yourself. And it turned out to be not so bad. It's not like it's not like that's a healthy thing. It's not a healthy thing to do. Right. right. And, and careful. That starts slipping into some of those OCD responses, those obsessive compulsive <laughs> uh, responses. Yeah. People have these. They think that if I just do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, then nothing bad will happen or, or my, my presentation will go well. But I have to do these things yeah. in order for my presentation to go well. Well, when your brain does that and it's reinforced because it wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be anyway, then your brain gets into this pattern of, well, you have to do this or it's going to be bad. Because remember yeah. last time we did it, it was okay. Yep. So the next thing you know, you're washing your hands 300 times a day and you're locking the door seven times before you leave. The exactly. If I don't think about it for eight hours a day, then most certainly the worst thing is going to happen. Right. You don't have that magical ability to prevent that thing from happening just by thinking about it. Right. Seriously. So anyway, um, thinking about the distractions you have in your life, because we all have them. We all have those uh, distractions. Um, are those distractions benefiting you? Sometimes they might be, or sometimes they might be getting in the way of you actually doing healthy and productive things for yourself. Right. So if you deem that those things are getting in the way, those distractions are becoming problematic, they're preventing you from either doing or tackling the things that you need to do um, then we need to decrease or eliminate some of those distractions. Yeah. And when we think about distractions, I always <clears throat> like to talk about the progression of distractions because today my distractions are five hours of social media a day. Well, social media hasn't been there for you for your whole life. What did you do? What did you do with your time before social media? Right. What was your distraction? Oh, reading books, you know, actually learning something and, you know, exercising your brain. Well, that was yes. a good thing. Yeah. And now your social media is just eating your brain, but mm -hmm. you go from feeding it to, to uh, <clears throat> you know, starving it. Yeah. Or rotting it. But the progression of distractions, you know, I used to exercise a lot. I used to go for walks. I used to take my dog for a walk. I used to do a lot of yard work and gardening. I used to 
you know, and now I'm consuming social media. Yes. Okay. And let me guess, you gained weight and you're, you're not happy and your back hurts. And right. You're pissed hurts. off all the time. And, uh, and is the social media really enhancing our lives? Is it, I mean, it's just entertainment. Um, and you, you yeah. really can't rely on it or trust that any of the, the, the knowledge and it, or what you perceive knowledge that you're gaining is uh, of use uh, to you. So, I mean, and people feel like they are, oh, I'm learning something. I'm what, well, oh, it's just entertainment. Yeah. Just the well, <laughs> Tom, you know, I've said several times, I have never had a Facebook account. I don't do Twitter. I don't do any of that. I do have TikTok, which I'm a consumer of. I don't post anything. I don't, you know, whatever. Just, you know, I look at TikTok sometimes. But my TikTok feed is puppies and recipes and motorcycles and you know, yeah. those kinds of things. But, um, but I talk to people and they're like, I just can't believe what he said or what she said. And, and you know, are these people really in it? And I just like, oh, man, I, I can tell you I am a happier human being for not consuming social media. Yeah. As and as evidenced by the people that I talk to that consume a lot of social media and they're just angry and irritable and opinionated and misinformed. It's so funny, Tom. Um, yep. You know, I consume I, I, different types of news outlets, um, not necessarily from this country, but I try to, I know what's going on in this country more from other news outlets. Um, yeah. Yeah. Than the American news outlets. Um, anyway, so it, it's so funny how misinformed people are. Yes. When they say something, I'm like, you you really believe that? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. That's yes. interesting. <laughs> there was a day when the internet uh, was not working here at the office. And so in between or uh, after, you know, the day was finished, I didn't have the opportunity to... Uh, really look at like TikTok. And that day I actually got some really productive things done that had been waiting. Um, and it's sort of like, hmm, <laughs> this is a helpful thing for me to do, you know, to limit the exposure to that kind of stuff. Once again, that's a distraction that uh, has, has become harmful uh, for me and for a lot of people. Um, as we've been discussing uh, social discussing social media, that that's one of the distractions that is harmful. So we need to decrease or even eliminate uh, that and replace it with something more helpful, something that's healthy for you, like reading or playing chess or going out and doing some exercise or you know taking the dog for a walk uh, or learning something new. You know, if you want to be on YouTube because you like watching videos, then maybe look up how to do something that you've never done before and learn what it's like, even if you don't plan on actually doing it, you know, like look up how to build a house. Maybe you would learn something interesting uh, from that. Um, hey, you remember that book, uh, Pillars of the Earth? No. Um, Ken Follett um, and, and uh, who was I talking like about like, Follett, architecture yeah. and like, you know, building the construction and stuff. And I had no desire to um, ever do that, but it was just fascinating learning about like what goes into, you know, con constructing, you know, like the perfect arch and like the, the putting a building together and what it takes and how many people are involved with it. And um, that, that was a great, uh, and healthy um, learning adventure uh, for me. I mean, that book's quite the tome anyway, but um, it's worth it's worth a read. Uh, cool. But anyway, so so distractions they they serve a purpose, um, and, and we need them at certain points in our life. Let's think about what distractions we use um, primarily, why we use them, how they make us feel, and let's not forget that we're distracting ourselves from something. So that something needs to be attended to at some point. So, yeah. And social media. Ooh. <laughs> Let's decrease that a little bit. I don't think we can ever get rid of that uh, totally, um, but we, we can at least reduce the harm that we experience uh, because of that by engaging in some other healthier things. 
and uh, what's your what's your purpose for your life or for today? Uh, I think that's a more important question to ask yourself and to focus on instead of what's the purpose of life. I, I think that many people have tried to uh, come up with the answer to that question, and um, they they come to their own. Uh, <laughs> um conclusion but is it correct is it's probably different than the next guys so instead of what's the purpose of life what's the purpose of your life right and and you don't have to it doesn't have to be that big question all the time it could be what's my purpose today yeah what do i want to accomplish today yeah then at the end of the day take an assessment look on your day look at all the things that you did and did you achieve that purpose or was it something else and did you discover that your purpose was to um watch uh as many episodes of your favorite series as you as you could <laughs> or consuming social media or was it uh doing gardening and making your house look uh, pretty and clean and so that you can feel good in your environment what purpose feels better to you mm -hmm. May not be well, as fun or exciting, but. Well, thank you for your time, Tom. It's always good to see you. It's uh, always a pleasure, always a treat. So thank you for engaging in the conversation. I hope this is helpful for you guys. Please feel free to drop us a line. Questions at therapyonzip.com. You can send us a question or you can just give us a, you know, uh, a commentary on what you liked about the show or um, what's interesting or what you want to hear more about. And uh, we're grateful to all those listeners, all those people who are uh, consuming it. Um, so thank you. Um, we're trying to be as helpful as we can and we enjoy doing this. So we'll continue uh, doing it. Um, but thanks. And we're just going to, we're just going to smooth over the comments that we've received, Tom, that people said they would love to not see the audio as or or the video of the bald guy. So like, uh, we appreciate the audio only, but the video is a little <laughs> bit much for an early Friday morning. So we're skipping over. We've that. heard you. We've heard you, but we're ignoring you. So. <laughs> so deal with it. So just, just put your phone face down. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Adapt. Persevere. Adapt. Yeah. Overcome. Improvise. Whatever you got to do. So. <laughs> Thank you so All right, much. Tom, you have a great you have a great weekend and a great vacation. Thanks, brother. All right, man. I'll see you next week. All right, next week.